How to get real estate seller leads. Sellers are the name of the game right now and a lot of people are struggling to get seller leads. So what I'm going to do is, from practical experience, break down the seven different ways that I've consistently generated seller leads when I was a top producing real estate agent. And not only that, I'm going to break down the nuances that I did in order to make them work even better than most people that are attempting to implement these strategies. So without further ado, let's show you seven different ways that you can consistently generate seller leads. What's up guys, it's Mike Sherrod to train thousands of agents every single year to scale their business the modern way. And what I'm going to dive into today, again, is seven different tactics that I personally used and that have helped many others use as well that have partnered with me at eXp in order to generate seller leads. So without further ado, let's dive into it. And before I do, I just want to say the last one is a little bit quirky, but it's one that actually generated the most. Number one is not going to be a surprise, which is prospecting. I got 80% of my listings in my first two years as a licensed agent through door knocking. I didn't like cold calling because I found that there was no way to actually build a connection there. And I found that my conversion was much higher when I was door knocking because I was able to establish the connection. I was able to get in front of people, have energy, show up looking well, put a face to the name. And I just found that even though you can go for bigger numbers on cold calls, I found that the conversion was much higher with door knocking. And I did incredible with that. And right now door knocking works extraordinarily well, especially using the approach that I used back when I was focusing on production, which again, if you want a video, because I fully break down my script, drop a comment below and I'll send it to you. Uh, but one of the things that worked well for me is finding a property that sold for X over list price in X amount of days that it was a really hot property and go door knock that whole street and say, hey, you know, my name is Mike Sharp with EXP Realty. I don't know if you noticed the property down the street just sold for X amount over list price in X amount of days, broke records in this community. And I just wanted to see if you would like to know how this might impact the value of your home right? And if you could look at the video again that you drop a comment for and I'll send it to you, uh, it will break down everything in detail because my script worked very well. I find the scripts online, to be honest, are quite terrible. They're, I can't honestly imagine somebody following a, uh, a traditional real estate script and actually converting with it. And unfortunately, without saying any names, some of the people that have written these scripts have never actually sold a house before. So without further ado, let's dive into point number two. Number two is Facebook and Instagram ads specifically tailored towards sellers. And there was two different ways that I approached this. One was just simply promoting sold properties that I just sold. So what I would do is after I sold any property, I would run two separate ads at about $40 a day each for the two weeks after that I sold that property. Number one would be a big sold banner over the property um, in terms of a really nice listing photo, uh, twilight, real twilight, not the box brownie shit, uh, but an actual twilight photo that looked really high quality with a sold banner and some stats on there, things like that with my contact information. And that did well. What did better was taking a photo of my clients outside of the property, super happy. I had this big sold sign and I would get them to stand outside beside my sign, the just listed sign with the sold rider on it. And I would run that as an ad because people connect with other people. They don't connect with properties, they connect with people, which is why for people that are active on social media, the worst thing you can do is turn your Instagram feed into a homes and land magazine. People don't connect with properties, they connect with people. So if you can run ads with other people in it that have enjoyed working with you, video testimonials, photo testimonials, photos of the big sold sign up front, that works really well because it humanizes it and it allows people to connect with the experience that you created for them and that ultimately they likely want for themselves as well. Number three is one that most most people can't seemingly wrap their head around, which is video tours on YouTube of properties. A lot of people make the misassumption that video tours are just going to attract buyers. But what you need to understand is that yes, in a blue moon, it's going to attract buyers, usually out of state buyers, relocation buyers. What it actually does for local sellers is it's a running case study showing what you do differently than other agents. So basically it's a portfolio of your quality of work. A lot of agents say that they go above and beyond and that they do all this marketing for their properties and for the clients and things like that but very few actually prove it and can show it so if you look at the top agents in my organization at exp with the wolf pack almost all of them are getting the majority of their seller leads from youtube video property tours just because again people are going to see that property tour and say damn, I want that for my property too. Look at the quality of that. That's how I want my property to be represented because 86% of sellers now prefer to work with a realtor who uses video. And that is one of the most important criteria they're using when vetting agents. So that one works incredible and it helps a ton of the agents in my organization get million dollar listings. Number four is Google ads specifically targeting 
sellers. Now, there's a couple nuances here that I think is really important. And again, one thing that you have to be aware of is that when you're targeting sellers and you're going for seller leads, seller leads are going to be more expensive. It's the nature of the game because usually it's going to be a quicker return on investment and it's also going to be less time involved with the property than if you're showing buyers. So just by the nature of competition, seller leads are going to be more expensive. So just make sure that when you're going into seller lead generation, you prepare yourself for this. But one thing that you need to understand is the more niche you can get, the better. So if you're trying to do seller leads on Google ads, you want to niche down. You want to go to specific communities. You want to go to specific styles of properties that are hot in your market. You want to go as niche and narrow as possible because if you just go broad, homes for sale in Calgary, homes for sale in Toronto, you've got all the heavy hitters in your market that are spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on the same search term. It's gonna be impossible for you to actually generate a frequent amount of leads. Whereas the more niche you go and the more specific you are, the easier it's gonna to be to get a frequent amount of leads and consistency as well as a low cost per lead. Number five, leveraging your sphere, obviously, but doing it in a bit of a more creative way. So one of the ways that I wanted to leverage my spheres, I didn't wanna just be you know, calling people up and say, hey, do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell? Uh, that usually doesn't go too far too quickly because again, people uh, are kind of sick of that. And to me, it just didn't feel natural. So I always tried to lead with value. So one of the things that I did is, and this was part of the past brokerages that I've been with and things like that, is events. So doing a summer barbecue where you can, again, it's cheap as heck. You can get hot dogs, whatever, but invite the kids and ask them to bring a friend, right? And it's one of the best ways to just very warmly invite people to something where everybody's having a good time, guards are down, you're inviting new people to the event, getting people that you've worked with in terms of past clients to bring somebody new so that you can introduce them. And basically, if everybody brings one person, you're doubling your sphere in one day and you can make very cheap. But leveraging your sphere is incredibly important. If you talk to 100% of top producing agents, they all swear and live by their sphere. Um, and any agent that's not doing well is not using their sphere. Uh, but I tried to find ways that were very natural, very authentic, and would allow me to build more connections. So doing some sort of local summer event, barbecue, movie day, Christmas, photos of Santa, whatever you can do, but leveraging your sphere by leading with value is a great way to get more sellers. Number six is establishing very crucial partnerships with other industry professionals. And when I talk about this, what I mean is a lot of people will have a connection with a mortgage broker, a lender, a lawyer, title, uh, financial planners, things like that, insurance brokers, whatever, life planners. But one of the things that you'll realize is a lot of these partnerships are very surface level. They're very mediocre. You'll run into them in like two months from now and they'll say, oh damn, Mike, I was just talking to somebody two months ago and they were you know, looking to sell a house I've completely forgot. And that will happen all the time. When I started getting into real estate, I established very key strategic partnerships where they would essentially shout my name from a mountaintop, where I had financial planners, I had wealth managers, I had insurance brokers, mortgage brokers, and lawyers. And what I would do is I would make it very clear that I'm only going to do this if it's one-to-one. -one, if we are really going to do this together, which is hard to find. Again, if it was easy to find, everybody would be doing it. But it would get to the point where people would be with my financial planner friend um, who manages people's wealth and he would call me and say, Mike, I'm in a meeting right now. My clients are beside me and they need to diversify their assets and they're looking to buy investment properties. I'm going to introduce you to them, but I just wanted to put a, you know, a name uh, in your ear to reach out and, and look out for that email later. And then they would hang up like he would literally call me while his clients are sitting there anytime they mentioned investing, buying or selling. And that is what allowed me to generate a lot of seller leads. So looking and auditing the strategic partnerships you have is very important. Number seven, finally, the one that is a bit unique is doing events for real estate investors. So one of the ways that I got a ton of sellers was to work with a lot of flippers who bought and sold. So what I used to do is I would do a monthly meetup where it was free and I'll bring coffee and you know, whatever snacks and stuff. And I would do a one hour presentation at a local co-working space here for free. And all that I would do is talk about how to flip properties in Calgary. I would talk about the investment opportunities, the right areas. I would talk about kind of before and after pictures, before and after uh, analysis in terms of what it was purchased for, what it was sold for, how much money went into it, what were the margins, things like that. 
and I got a ton of flipper clients and a lot of them went on to work with me and then they would buy a property and then sell it and they would go buy another one and sell it and I would work with them on the buy and sell. So that was a really great way for free to build a massive amount of repeat sellers who also were repeat buyers. So these were the seven ways that I consistently generated seller leads. If you have another way that works really well for you, drop a comment below because I'd love to know what works best for you, any unique ideas that you might have and what you've seen success with. But anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.